Oh, we're all gonna die. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that bombed in 2023 so far. You think I know how to fix this dude, but I really don't. For this list, we're looking at big screen releases from the first half of the year that failed to recoup their costs in the theatrical window. Keep in mind, some of these films are still playing, and final figures are largely estimates anyway. Which of these did you support in theaters? Let us know in the comments. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com slash play. Number 10, The Covenant. Full title, Guy Ritchie's The Covenant, this one actually generated some positive marks, but the days of war movies grossing hundreds of millions of dollars are starting to fade. You think if I could be shot of this debt, I wouldn't be? You think if I could just go through the usual channels, I wouldn't? The film stars Jake Gyllenhaal as U.S. Army Master Sergeant John Kinley during the war in Afghanistan. When he's injured and dead to rights, his ex-Taliban interpreter Ahmed makes the grueling journey to get him home. But returning the favor proves even harder. Okay, so yeah, well then how long will that That's be? a minimum nine months, sir. They, they can't wait nine months. If they wait nine months, they will be dead. Debuting to a weak $6.3 million in April, The Covenant couldn't draw in older audiences, while younger ones saw the Super Mario Brothers movie and Evil Dead Rise. And it was director Guy Ritchie's second bomb in back-to-back -back months, with Operation Fortune doing little better in March. I don't think I believe what I just heard. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Number nine, Hypnotic. Sorry, <coughs> just stood up for a second. You're probably thinking, a Robert Rodriguez movie starring Ben Affleck? Did I get hypnotized into forgetting this even came out? Well, you probably weren't aware to begin with, seeing as the studio barely promoted this one. Hypnotics. People with the ability to actually influence the brain over a psychic bandwidth. Its premise surrounding people with the ability to control others through sheer will could have made for a mind-bending thriller. But as it stands, it feels more like an extended episode of a rote crime procedural with even worse acting, making us understand the lack of faith behind the scenes. Don't blame them, detectives. They're no more conscious of themselves than Lyle Terry was. It couldn't even make back 10% of its $65 million budget. And while we're talking about bombs you've never heard of, the adaptation of the Knights of the Zodiac manga put up almost identical numbers in the same release date. I know. It's okay. It wasn't your fault. Number 8. Air April was not the month for sports biopics, as Big George Foreman didn't even make back a fifth of its budget. Look, I'm sorry, Mr. Foreman, but if these payments aren't made soon, the bank will have to start repossessing the property. But while Air got way more eyeballs, it also cost a lot more. I'm gonna blow a quick 20 right here, okay? It's gonna cost too much money. No, not if we bet it all on one guy. Too risky. You want the whole budget? Whole budget. The production budget and theatrical gross are both around $90 million, meaning you can pretty much copy and paste its advertising costs right into the loss column. We need a firm offer. You don't have authorization to make any offer. I understand from his representation that he'll be expecting the entire amount, 250 a year, five years guaranteed. We can't afford that offer. Do you understand how irresponsible that is? Another underperformer for director star Ben Affleck, this one conversely has found its audience on streaming, who have taken to the story behind Nike signing Michael Jordan in the 1980s. And if there's any further consolation, it's that Air could have a longer shelf life come award season. Forget about the shoes. Forget about the money. You're going to make enough money. It's not going to matter. Money can buy you almost anything. It can't buy you immortality. Number 7. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves I don't want to see you die. Which is why I'm going to leave the room. Fans finally got the D&D movie they had been waiting for with this fun, hilarious blast. Unfortunately, the numbers dictate it might be the last one for another long while. Ah, fine. Can we just keep this between us? I don't want to hurt some morale. What morale? While a $208 million worldwide haul is nothing to sneeze at, its $150 million price tag means it's probably a cool $100 million in the red. Granted, we knew this one had an uphill battle from the get-go, and it probably did better than it would have had it not gotten rave reviews. 
But in the numbers game that is Hollywood, taking a risk following up what was already a risk is a fool's errand. So it might already be time to say goodbye to this band of thieves. Aren't you sick of failing? No! That's the whole point. We must never stop failing because the minute we do, we failed. Huh? Number six, Renfield. I deserve love. I deserve happiness. <gasps> you deserve only suffering. More than any other genre, horror gives the greatest return on investment, seeing as the audience is sturdy and movies cheap to produce. But while the familiar ones have prospered this year, it's the wild cards that have suffered. Take, for instance, Bo is Afraid, a three-hour surrealist enigma that didn't come close to matching writer-director Ari Aster's previous successes. I call the police. But no, no, look, I'm paying, I'm paying. Meanwhile, Renfield, a modern update on the Dracula story, couldn't even pull in half of its $65 million budget. While mixed reviews didn't help, this can be chalked up to audiences simply not understanding its satirical slant, preferring to see the more standard Pope's Exorcist, which came out the same day. Like many Nicolas Cage films, perhaps Renfield has a future in cult viewings. Whatever pain Renfield caused here, I will return 10,000 fold. Number five, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. All right, here's the situation. We have one more job to do, and that's to keep this bridge from collapsing. The Ben Franklin Bridge has collapsed. 2023 has been very unkind to DC, and not just at the box office. Warner Brothers hasn't done their new offerings any favors either, with new management basically telling fans that current releases don't matter in the wake of the imminent DCU reboot. And it doesn't help when Shazam! Fury of the Gods gets called inferior to its predecessor in just about every way. And I can't say this to anyone else because my family looks to me as a leader, but I feel like a fraud. You understand I'm a pediatrician, right? Box office projections were already low for this one, so you knew it was in trouble when it still underperformed with $30 million in its first weekend. Even with that low opening, it still managed to drop 69% in weekend two, at which point it was all but forgotten. We hope that Skittles product placement at least paid out some. Taste the rainbow, motherfucker! <laughs> Number four, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. You should have looked the other way. Yeah, well, never been great at that. Unless you're Guardians of the Galaxy, it's rough out there for live-action superhero flicks this year. While Ant-Man has never been a top-tier Avenger in terms of dollars and cents, that hasn't stopped Marvel from putting down big bucks for the little guy. In fact, Quantum Mania was supposed to be the groundbreaking debut for the MCU's Phase 5. And while it more than doubled its production budget, where conventional wisdom says you should be to break even, added costs have many reporting this as one of the MCU's few financial misfires. It's okay. What are we gonna do? It's okay, it's okay, we're okay. Despite a strong $120 million four-day holiday weekend opening, it too suffered a 69% drop in its second weekend, and it didn't get better from there, its receipts shrinking faster than its titular hero. This is the quantum realm, um, and you have to shrink it in the quantum realm. So we bigger, shrunk, and right now we're really from, small. We're so we're small. Number three, Elemental. A pipe squished me all out of shape. Dang. <laughs> That's better. Oh. Perhaps more than any other studio, Pixar hasn't rebounded well from the pandemic. Despite their consistent quality, they saw a few offerings go straight to Disney+. Plus. They returned to theaters in 2022 with Lightyear, which bombed against a $200 million budget. Almost exactly one year later, with the exact same budget, is Elemental, and already we're seeing history repeat itself. I love hot food. You see? He likes it! Though the romance of a fire gal and a water guy has drawn positive marks, it likely won't be enough to put out the box office flames. Meanwhile, the summer hasn't been any kinder to Pixar's bitter rival DreamWorks, as Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken floundered out the gate with a meager $5.2 million opening. I think I am having a panic attack! Number two, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Fasten your seatbelts, there might be some tablets. 
We know, this is a new release as of this video. And believe us, if it makes back even one dollar theatrically, we'll be happy to eat crow. But the numbers are already painting a bleak picture. Well, in that case, what are we drinking? To put things in perspective, Dr. Jones's last outing had a reported budget of 250 to 300 million dollars. Even on the low end, that's a steep climb. But some estimates even have it as high as 325 million dollars. Unless you're James Cameron, that makes it exceedingly difficult to make bank, let alone a profit. You stole it. Then you stole it. And then I stole it. It's called capitalism. It opened worldwide to 130 million dollars. And considering that was a day and date release internationally, don't expect Indy to snag a wad of cash at the last second like it's a fedora. You've taken your chances, made your mistakes, and now a final triumph. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few costly dishonorable mentions. 65. This one couldn't even make $65 million. All passengers are dead. Send help. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Prayers for profitability weren't answered. Only you could give me a hint, God. Of the greatness of his I'm more confused than ever. Magic Mike's Last Dance. Good old Mike just couldn't rake in the singles on this one. I'm, as many times as you guys say that, I'm not just gonna burn my friend's money and not care. All right, oh, I don't. Money is water, Mike. It flows in both directions. Book Club, the next chapter. Its totals don't have a nice ring to it. The only question is how will we mess this all up? I can't wait to find out. <laughs> About my father. Sebastian Maniscalco's stand-up reputation couldn't draw in audiences. We don't like to put prices on things because it's just an annoying reminder of money, mm. right? Oh. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Flash You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts. This one goes beyond superhero fatigue as a confluence of factors seemingly led to a disaster for The Flash. This is mad trippy. Dude, this is catastrophic. For one thing, star Ezra Miller's tumultuous 2022 did not do the movie any favors. Couple that with the big shakeups at WB, and the studio could be looking at a loss of $200 million. The film already cost that much and more to produce, and seeing as it's already petering out around $250 million worldwide, the Scarlet Speedster would be wise to go back in time and fix what went wrong. I have to undo what I did. Hey, scars we have. Make us who we are. I'm not meant to go back and fix them. No, but your tragedy define you. Even if the movie had turned out to be one of the greatest superhero movies of all time, like DC promised, it still would have had its work cut out for it. No matter what we do, we're not going to be able to fix this. No! Nobody dies! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.